All right, ladies and gents, we have spent the past three days getting used to polynomials, all things adding, subtracting, and multiplying. Now today, we get to put them together in a mix to see how much has stuck. So we are going to be dealing with pages 7 through 10 in your packet today. No lesson, um, just going to be working on it, making sure we got a few of the details down. Have your notes close because they can come in handy. So again, check and read carefully. For instance, my first two sections here, I'm going to do one in each. But when you're doing these, if you see the plus or the minus in the middle, that's just adding. That's just combining like terms, like it says here. If you don't see a plus or a minus between the parentheses, that's when we're multiplying. So for our instance here, so let's say we're looking at number one. Since it's a plus and not a minus in the middle that we have to distribute, we'll deal with that a little bit later in the packet here. I'm just going looking for things that are alike. And I notice here, that's the only term that has x squared. So, 2x squared. But once I start getting to some of the other terms, negative 4x plus 3x, again, I, I, there is no shame if you're not sure of getting some help. And 5 minus 3 is 2. Signs matter. Okay, but that's it. I'm putting things together. When we get down to the multiplying, we have talked about just distributing like we would with a monomial. And we've talked about here either foiling or using the box when it comes to doing these. So let's do a quick chat here. I want to look at one thing a little bit ahead here before we get too far in. Okay, I can do this on here. I'm going to actually start at 6 and come back to 5. So here, whatever is outside the parentheses, we're going to distribute. Remember your rules. Big numbers don't play by little number rules. We did that way back before when we were working on exponent rules. So 6 times 4 is 24. And when we multiply, we add the exponent. 2 plus 1 is 3. Okay, so again, reminder multiply coefficients add exponents because that's what we do when we're doing these. And the nice thing is, you can pause me on this video anytime you want. Multiply my coefficients. There is no other x here, so it's just x squared. These are not the same. I cannot add these. They both have to be 3 or both have to be 2. They're not. I'm done. Okay? That's our method if we just have a single term, a monomial. However, if they get bigger, can I, like we talked about before, do all this distributing? And, sure. Sure. But I think you're going to be much better served by making a box. Well, how do I figure out how the box works again? I just need it to be the same size as the number of terms. So I got two terms here and three terms going across the top. Notice wherever there was just an x, I put an x to the first to remind me when I get to my multiplying rules. So as I start to fill this in, multiply the coefficients, add the exponents. Multiply the coefficients, add the exponents. Multiply the coefficients. There is no other x term, so I can just put my x or my x to the first there. Same rule all the way through. Multiply my coefficients. There are no exponents. Multiply my coefficients. Multiply my coefficients. Now, I don't just get to leave the box here. We talked about this before as well. I got to go through and I got to find the terms that are alike. And the cool thing is the biggest term is always going to be up here to the left. And then we just work our way through. 
So there's my only x to the third term. Negative 4 and positive 4x squared cancel. So they're gone. They're not there anymore. Negative 2 and negative 4, we're adding once the box is full. Okay? Multiply to fill the box. Okay? And then we're going to add when our box is full. And then that two is on the end. Okay? That works for two by threes like this. It works for two by twos like this. Again, if you need to go back, look at the notes, look at the lesson on that to see. You can do that. Okay. Now, when we get down to here, I'm going to give a little bit of guidance. I'm not going to go crazy. So when we're looking for the perimeter, if you're only given one of each side, I could write this out again as 2x squared plus 6 and 4x plus 2 and just add them. Or I can do two lengths plus two widths, or I could also say two length plus width. Okay, I could combine these together and multiply by two. Or, like I said, I could write them each out and do it that way as well. So here, let's just say, because I know if you wrote them out, 2x squared plus 6, 4x plus 2, you could do that. But let's say I decided I was just going to combine like terms here. So I'd have 2x squared. That's my only x term, so 4x. And then 6 plus 2 is 8. And I could multiply that by 2. So if I distribute my 2, I'd get 4x squared, I'd get 8x, I'd get 16, and I'm done. Same thing I would get, oops, sorry about that, if I would have just added these in and then combined like terms. 4x squared, okay, 4x and 4x is 8x. And 6 plus 2 is 8, plus 6 is 14, plus 2 is 16. They both work, okay? And then this is going to be a doozy. I'm not even going to lie. Find the area. Remember, area is length times width. So this is going to be, and I'm not doing this whole one. I'm going to set you up, though. This is a doozy. I'm not even going to lie. There is no shortcut for this one. You're going to do the exact same thing with this big old 3x3 three three box that you did with the 2x3 here. You're going to add your exponents and multiply your coefficients till this is all full. And then we're going to find the like terms and we're going to get them put in down here. This is kind of our challenge problem, okay? Probably not a quiz type problem, but one, again, is you get an upper level math that you're going to want to be able to figure out a little bit. So same stuff, going on to 9 and 10. Then 11 gets a little funky. 11 wants us to find the perimeter in the area. So I need you to be a sleuth with me here. We need to be a detective. And so you're looking, you're like, well, they didn't give me all the sides and things here. But do I need them all? So you're like, well, I kind of do because the perimeter, okay, my perimeter is going all the way around here, and I definitely do not have all of that information. So how am I going to go about finding it? Well, some of them are pretty straightforward. Like this is the same length as this. which is the same length as this. Now again, could I just do the times two like we did on the first part? I could, that would work. Well, what about this whole long side here? 
okay, can you find pieces that would make that whole thing? Would you agree that this piece plus this piece gives me the whole piece? So I find my like terms. 1x squared and 2x squared could be 3x squared minus 2x. 8 plus 1 is 9. And we've seen before, rectangle, this side is the same as this side. So at this point, I can just combine like terms out here. Or I could just do it for two sides and multiply by two. They both would work. My area, you're like, oh, not another one of those huge ones again. Yep, another huge one because, again, I'm going to be taking x squared plus 7x minus 4 and multiplying it by 3x squared minus 2x plus 9. Big old 3 by, whoop, kind of helped if I was on the screen, wouldn't it? Big old box again. The good thing about these is it's getting you that practice, that repetition with multiply the big numbers, the coefficients. Add the exponents, combining like terms. If you're doing the things right now, oh my gosh, this quiz is going to be easy. But if you're just sitting and staring at your weapon of mass distraction and going, and all the things, it, it, you're going to keep getting the same results. I don't want to see some of you next year in the same class. I want to see you in Algebra 2 or Geometry or one of those things. Okay, and then here it's just straightforward again. Adding and subtracting. Don't make life complicated. As we've said, if you see a minus, okay, when you see minuses, that's the only time anything is changing. Okay, this is not changing. This is not changing. These are, I almost missed that one. And all that's happening on either of these Okay, this stays the same. Over here, the signs just all change. So negative 6n, positive 5, positive 3n to the fourth. Look around for my like terms. Okay, there's my biggest exponent. That's the only one with an exponent. Okay, so that's first. Got that one. 5n minus 6n, watch your signs. Negative 1n, and 8 plus 5 is 13. That's all you're doing in the first part. A little distributing if there's a minus, but if there's not, just combine things. Just go ahead and keep writing them in. Okay, no big thing there. Find the product. We just got done with these two. Just a little distributing on the first three. If you need a box... I like boxes on anything that's not just a single term. Put my little ones in there. I don't want to forget. And again, we're adding exponents if they both have x's. Otherwise, we're just multiplying coefficients. If you want, you can put a 1 in front of the x. 1 times 7 is 7. 1 times negative 2 is negative 2. Negative times negative is positive. So again, multiply to fill the box. Multiply the big numbers, add the little ones. And then we're just going through. Okay, again, once we get here, we're just adding. We're not multiplying anymore. If I owe my friend 21 bucks and I borrow two more, I've now borrowed 23. Practice makes better. Okay, not always perfect, but better. And so again, I'm just getting that repetition. And today it's even better because it's not just one thing. We're doing a little adding. We're doing a little multiplying. You're like, Hardy, oh my gosh. But I'm telling you, it's going to make that quiz preview easy when you get there if you're doing the right things. Now, there's one other one that I want to do on this because, again, we've had plenty of examples the last two days. If you've written them down, if you've missed, 
Go back and watch those videos, get your notes completed, because that's going to make this easy peasy. When we get down to these, 20, 21, 22, remember, we are not just distributing the exponent. That does not work. It means there are two of these. And I can either make me a box. Don't forget my exponent on my x. Multiply the bigs and the littles. Apply the bigs, there are no other littles. There's only one term that has an x squared, so that's by itself. We're just adding these, 2 plus 2, for x, don't mess with the exponent. Okay, that will work for this. For my speed demons out there, because we talked a little bit about this, if you like patterns, here's how you can do this faster without the box. You square your first term. So 2 squared is 4, x squared. You multiply these together. 1 times 2x is 2x, and you double it. There's 4. And you square your last term. 1 to the second power, 1 times 1 is 1. Any of them work. Now again, Use your time well. You have nearly half an hour. You've got to get some practice in with add, subtract, multiplying little, multiplying big, and getting those things. Because then when we flip the page the next time we see each other and we get to the quiz preview, it's not going to be, what? You got this. You can do it. You've just got to decide that you're going to put your mind to it. All right. Keep working on those other ones. Check answers up front or online. Don't just copy. That won't help you on the quiz. And we'll see you next time.